I suppose I should take this call. Oh, spoil spot, but he's right. I probably should. Welcome back, everybody, to Killer Frequency. This is part two. I hope you enjoyed the first part, but right, yeah. Let's turn this off and let's answer the call. It might be an emergency. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Yeah. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Okay. Hi, Brian. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. <laughs> what have you got to say? about what's happening. Oh, I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. Me too. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. <laughs> well, all right. Ryan. That's really good of you, but you really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Oh, yeah? Because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. All right. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, <laughs> the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it it didn't come out great, but don't worry about it. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, thank you, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else off coming on down to Pony's Pizza. <laughs> He's really We've taking the piss, a isn't he? Special this weekend, our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Pony's <laughs> Pizza. He's still this going. Weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it! You're just calling in to advertise your shop. <laughs> Peggy, hang up on him. Done. There oh, you go. Real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Oh. Now a word from our sponsors. Okay. You know how to play an ad, right? Um. Do you want to know how to play a cassette? Yes. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um. Okay. Okay. Nothing in there at the moment. So I guess these these are all ads. Okay. Let's see, which one's this? Harvest Festival. Uh, yeah. Okay. Alright, and play. Done. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, <laughs> balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seats, bitten sand, licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. Wow. And fake what? tattoo, <laughs> face paint, puppets, pet and zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle. Pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous <laughs> gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. Wow. I can see why it's world famous. Yeah. It's a highlight around here for us. <laughs> oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. There's a next... Oh, okay, we have another caller. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie, this is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. Um... What? God, another one? Yep, another one. Sorry, can't do that. Uh, Leslie left me in charge. Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie... 
Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? Yeah. What happened? Did you witness the incident? No. Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? No. I can cite you as an anonymous source. <laughs> That's a concern. Uh, no, we're, we're live on the radio. We're actually on air. We're, we're live on air, exactly. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. And not anonymously. I, damn it. <laughs> All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. Right, yeah. I, I don't think it's a teen. I don't know if he's back. It might be a copycat, but right. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. I mean, he might Every be right. Yeah, this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. Is that right? I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Nope. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. Alright. And there's a set in the boardroom. Uh... No, don't take him on. Can he get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. What's that? That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. All right. He's blocking the stairs. Wonderful. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Hmm. Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? Call the killer? We have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Right. But what's to say he's going to pick up? We're going to buy Marie's time? Buy Marie's time? That could work. Exactly! It's worth a shot. Hmm. I can hear you, you know. <laughs> the son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Thank God. Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? I do. For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. Right. All delivered while the killer is en route. Yeah. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. Uh, okay, I wasn't planning to. Okay. I hear scribbling and printing? You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Oh! It was don't a fax. Let me down. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Wasn't it back there? Uh, oh, there's more to do. Oh. Oh! I'll go pick up that map, then. <laughs> Go, Forrest! Right. <laughs> the fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. I know, Thanks, I know. Be right back. <laughs> I was just about to go and get it. Uh, I okay. think I left the folder on it. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Right. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Right, so this isn't it. Put that down there. Right! This must be it. Okay. Wow, he... He scribbled that down quick, and to be honest, that's not half bad. Alright. Okay, so let's get back to it, and uh, let's see if this can maybe help us. <sighs> Alright. I am very much enjoying this game. It's so unique, and it's so well done. And, uh, you know, it's all based on audio, but thankfully the audio is so, so good. Okay. 
Hey, did you get the fax? I did. Yes, I have it. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? I did, yes. Got it right here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Thank okay, you. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. <laughs> Here's the situation. It's a part of the show now. Whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. Right. Now, he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Okay. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. I and see. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Okay, where where should I call to lure the killer away? It's the archives, the kitchen, the editor's office, or the, the, the boardroom where I think he is. Because everywhere else has been checked, according to him, right? So he's there at extension four. And he's... Right, the killer's currently at the office space area? Okay. Um, we want to get Maurice over to the left to the stairs, right? Uh, three, maybe. The editor's office? Yeah, the editor's office, I'm thinking? Because it's kind of close by, and maybe he can slip by undetected? I don't know, though. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Yeah. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Oh, come on, man. Why do I have to do everything? Right, it's... No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this. It's gonna be the kitchen or the archives. Either one would do, I guess, really. Uh, the kitchen's slightly closer. Kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Go somewhere he's already checked. Right, right. Not bad, Nash. Just I'm move. ready to place the car. <laughs> Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Right. Yes, sir. Calling... Now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. Right. Well, good plan. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Yeah. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. Okay. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Right. Do you think he'll make it okay? I hope I'm so. Sure he'll be fine. <laughs> but now what do we do? Yeah. We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Hmm. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. Oh yeah? You ready? Uh, <laughs> no, but yes, ready as I'll ever be. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. Good, good. I gotta give you credit for that, but I'm not out of the woods yet. No. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Yeah. Exactly. I can move the furniture out of the way, but not quickly or quietly. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> can you fight him? No. Could, could you Could you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Yeah. Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Uh. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, 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 I got it. The secret archive through my office. Oh, yeah? Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ah. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? <laughs> you a conspiracy fan? Ah, I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. Will you two chatterboxes <laughs> pipe down? Yeah, we probably should. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Ah. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... Right. We can catch the son of a gun. Okay. Exactly. 
Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. Sounds too so good to I be true. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. Right. So we don't have a phone in there. No. We're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Um, a TV? Use yourself as bait or a radio? What about a TV? Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Mm. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in, and I get my head chopped off. Think right. of something else. Okay, yeah. I can't really afford to make any dumb decisions, can I? Um, <laughs> so using yourself as bait is not going to work. The radio. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Okay. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. Oh? He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Alright. Okay. <laughs> is he a fan? I'm glad you got a radio fan there. Does he listen to 189.16, The Scream? Gallows Creek's best and only late night Colin show. Nash. I'd expect that level of self advertisement from <laughs> Brian Ponty, not you. Don't be a Ponty for us. All right, all right. Well. Will you idiots focus now? Yes, this focus. Portable radio should still be here. Okay. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. Okay, all right. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Shouldn't take long, hopefully. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Uh, Heck, I hope if so. If this works, we might even save the whole town. <laughs> One person at a time. Well, uh, yeah, let's make it happen. We're close. Yeah, let's make it happen, Peggy. Think How positive. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with steps. Hmm. Get the radio, plan it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and oh. Call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. Brilliant. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Okay. Oh, whoa. Maurice, turn the volume down. Yeah, good we idea. don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was <laughs> just doing that when you yelled at me. Uh-huh. Better to be safe than sorry. The radio works! Good. If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. <laughs> Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. For Hopkins. Wait. Ah, oh, goddammit. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! Right. Just... Oh, that's a good point. Right. But wait, we're the radio. We are. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Yeah. Uh, if you can do that, then... No playing any records. Yeah. Sure. 189.16. Now, even when I know something for a fact, I like to double check. But after your earlier self-advertisement, <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. No. <laughs> got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Okay. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Yeah. Where should we send the killer? Okay, so it's going to be the archives, the kitchen, or the boardroom. And he's... Wait, he's in the archives and he's trying to get to the editor's office, right? So... I'm going to get him out of the way. The kitchen or the boardroom? The... The boardroom, maybe? He's in, he's in that corner? I don't know. Ah, oh, shit. Boardroom? I'm good. Boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office. Yeah, he'll hear but it ringing. I haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Well, yeah, he's not there at the moment, is he? So, yeah, let, let's let him investigate the boardrooms now. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling shit. the boardroom now. This is actually very tense. Oh, I can hear the whistling. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Okay. Good luck. 
Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. <laughs> Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Uh, I'll call him a jackass. I'll just call the whistling man a jackass. Why not? That'll get his attention. That's the plan, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure is. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. Okay. Here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Good. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. Not there, then. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Right. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. That doesn't seem like a good idea, I then. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. And you're going to have to cross the boardroom. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, your cabinet, maybe? The cubicle. It's the cabinet or the cubicles, but the cubicles, you'd have to pass by the boardroom area where he is, right? That's where he's investigating. If he takes a step out, he's going to see you. So... What did he say about the cabinet? It's going to take a while? Oh, shit. I'm so glad some of these decisions aren't timed. Let's try the cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. Yeah. Alright. Well, this is it. This is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Right. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. No music. You can trust us. Here we go. Right. Is that him trying to get into the cabinet? Okay. Uh, no. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. Hey, whistling man. Jackass. You think you're something special, huh? Well, guess what, pal? You got another thing coming. So did that work? There's the whistling. Oh god. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the whistling man. Yeah? <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Neither can I! Exactly! Frankly, neither can I! If I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. So- Thank oh God, it's over! I'll be off now. Wow. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. Right. I'd feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Agreed. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. Let's we'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. There we are, folks. The whistling man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. No pun intended. Actually, that was very intended, wasn't it? Right, what's it going to be this time? With Stab in the Twilight. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's funky, it's groovy, it's Stab in the Twilight by Knife and Easy. All right, I guess we don't need this anymore. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Oh, don't right. say that. Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now and you're still all shrouded in mystery. All right, well, what do you want to know? All right, shoot, what do you want to know? Question one, tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy, that's too general. Okay, did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope, no, that's too specific. <laughs> too specific? I, do you have any siblings? I don't, I'm an only child and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. Yeah, uh, that's all right. That's how it goes. Uh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. 
Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the question. <laughs> you were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, really? Oh, what happened there? Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. Ah. Uh. Well, that was dad. Oof. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. Mm. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Yeah. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Hmm. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. Not anymore? I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Oh? Someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? No. Mm -hmm. You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. But uh, I'm the DJ. One of Reggie's K fan regulations. I, uh, I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Uh, thanks, Peggy. Gee, thanks, Peggy. Right, so I'm off, am the I? Buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. Yeah, hopefully. Is it the killer at the door? I. Mm. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. Right, okay, well, there's the key. Okay, second floor stairway, uh, which is, what, is it here? That's not opening. Oh, right, okay, It's it's got to be next to the toilets, by the offices. Over here. Yep, there we are. Okay. Right, so let's see. Roof access? Not going to work. Never mind. Oh, it's it's padlocked? Oh, fantastic. Okay. <sighs> Down here, then? All right. All right. Honestly, it could have been restricted to the one room, but I like that we can run around this place. It's brilliant. So here's the front door. And a... Tape. Apparently. Play on air. Huh. Yeah, okay. Right, so... I'm gonna do that, but I wanna have a little look around first, honestly. Right, okay, so if we put it in our other hand, we can actually inspect various things like this Top Hits magazine. There you go. <laughs> Alright. So, around here, we've got... okay. Alright. <laughs> Someone's a little office, by the looks of it. Good job on the new job! Yeah, Genie, good luck. Alright. Yeah, as I said before, lots of little flavour in this game. It's nice. Alone? Hmm, okay. Right. Genie and Carrie's friendship... <laughs> what the fuck? The fuck was that? Hang on, put, put that down. This is locked, right? Nothing else came through? What the hell was that? Man, okay, yeah, right. Uh, so, let's continue investigating, but honestly, I want to go back to the studio as soon as possible. Let's see, anything in here? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Alright, lift this up, there we go. Yeah, there's so many interactable items as well. Is that... Ah, just scribbles. <laughs> like, literal scribbles. Bob, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope we can still be friends, though, Brad. P.S. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. Right, okay. Lots of cats, little umbrellas. We're having cocktails behind reception. Okay. Can we put that down? There we go. Alright. What's this? Oh. Ah, I think I've seen this! I think I've seen this in one of the screenshots for the game. I might actually need this. Yeah, I right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this down here. I might need this a little bit later on. Can't have a look at the filing cabinets. 
Got a staff area. I need a key to get in there. Ah, right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I, I should probably play this tape. Maybe not on air, but I'm curious. Very curious, actually. Yeah, this has been a really, really good game. All right. Okay, the track's still playing, thankfully. So, do I play it or not? We're not actually on air, so this music is just for us. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's see, can I... Oh, I, yeah, I can talk to Peggy. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. Yeah. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Okay. We're going to be doing this on air. Right. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was from the killer. I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Right. Uh... Be careful. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the <laughs> tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Yeah. Stay home and stay safe. Do you think there's a few of them? If you need help, you can get us on 911. <laughs> Let's put that there. Okay. Yeah. How was that delivered if he's locked up? Unless there's more than one. Hey, we had a call come in. Hmm, okay. Alright, let's see, line one. Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with f Ash! Shut up and listen to me! Oh, it's Maurice. Mr. Russell? What's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen! He's gone! The whistling man is gone! <sighs> but... Uh, how? What happened? He's gone? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies. We came back here to keep watch. Okay. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. Door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Right. <sighs> so, did you let him escape? Did you let him escape? Of course we did it. I demand you retract that accusation. Damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. Huh. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. None. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... <laughs> you think he's some kind of ghost? Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Mooney. Oh. There's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. <laughs> I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. Right. He seems really spooked. I don't blame him. Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? Probably. <sighs> He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, mm. you're probably right. But what do we do now? What do we do now? We move on to 104. Right. Oh boy. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. <laughs> we'll remove her from the suspect list. Right. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. You do? All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. 
This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. Right, let's try Storm Riders. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. <laughs> all right. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Oh. You stopped the show for a tape? Just go get it. Okay. Another one from the killer, maybe? Nah, I don't know. This is going to become a thing, isn't it? All right. Play me ASAP off air. Okay. So this is definitely going to be off air. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. In it goes. Or try your call again. Straight to voicemail? My God. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. Right. I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. <laughs> Forrest, mate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina. You know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played <laughs> on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. Final Breath? It's Roddy Snatcher, Forrest! You know, Roddy Snatcher? Uh-huh. Uh, apparently we're old friends. Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. <sighs> I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. Yeah, it's not here. Wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. I don't think you I have know. To play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. Uh -huh. They mailed it to KFAM, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Oh. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, <laughs> folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. Right. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get yeah. Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Okay. Okay, so down at reception somewhere. Well, I was just there. I didn't didn't see anything. Rise. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's go over it with a fine-tooth comb. So, somewhere down here. Maybe in someone's personal collection. Any killers out there? Anyone whistling? Nothing posted through, thankfully. What about this? Is it in here? No. No, that's that's not a package, is it? That's a that's a cushion. This is someone's chair. This is a horrible little office space, but you know, you make the best of it, I suppose. Right. Is it gonna be hidden away somewhere? It's not gonna be, you know, framed around here, is it? Um around here? Maybe it's in the staff area. Key. Maybe I need to find a key for the staff area. Right. Um Oh, hang on. Alright. <laughs> Let's keep that off. Uh, okay, hang on. What we got here? A VHS datables? Barbara. Right. Okay, three of them. Oh, hang on. Here it is. This must be it. Final breath. Yeah. My tiny selection grows. Right. Okay. So, yeah, we don't want to get sued. We need to play that. Here I am, back again. With the record, I think. Let's see. There it is. There it is. Final breath. Right. Hey, Peggy. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! <laughs> Hello's Greek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much-needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. 
Okay. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. You've had two seconds. <laughs> and more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, am I going to find some more records around the place? I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. <laughs> oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. So you're oh, going to steal shit. it? I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I oh. really hope it's nothing serious. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Right. Okay, so turn this off. Right, find one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Okay. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh, most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy <laughs> birthday, Fernando. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Oh, dear. A man with a big knife, huh? Ruben, come face me. A true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Guess what? There it is. Yeah, I... Th this is a bad idea, Murphy. This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. Good for you. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, indeed. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. I don't know if I can save this one. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Another ad? Another cassette? Okay, uh, what's this one? Okay. Oh, this is, this is what he was talking about, I think. Deadly Master of the Martial Arts. Okay. Right, hang on. Put that one down. Put that there. In it goes. And Time play. Time to play a commercial. All right. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung <laughs> oh and God. receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, the speed of the tuna, the poise of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. <laughs> Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Wow. That guy's dead. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, <laughs> you'll receive two additional VHS tapes. The Tornado Technique and Karate Love Making. Call today! <laughs> Do people really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but <laughs> I might watch them. I guess. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. <laughs> uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. All right. Wow, what a deal. Only twenty four ninety nine, <laughs> And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. Of course Just not. ask Murphy. But unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. Right. We got a caller. You know what to do. Uh, at this point, yes, I do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. 
Okay. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Uh, are you okay? Do you need help? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. Right. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times? Already? So, you saved them, or...? We sure did. Yeah, we did. You're in safe hands. So far. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan. Uh, Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? Um, can you call a neighbor? Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. Right. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. Okay. That take out coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Oh dear. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Right. Wait, the takeout! If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Okay. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. <laughs> don't be a child, no, just... Don't, don't worry. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. I can't do this! She really is freaking out, isn't she? Well, folks. Seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Right. Right, okay, yeah. I've, maybe somewhere down there. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, what's it gonna be? The hang-ups. Let's try that one. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree. Right. And you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. Of course. That's it, I think. Okay. Well, there, hang on, there's Ponte's... Right, hang on. So, Ponte's Pizza, Chalupa Cabras. Oh, hang on. Oh, look at this. Oh, we can, like, pin things? Oh, that's pretty cool. Didn't realize that. Ponte's Pizza, Chalupa Cabras... What was the other one? Oh, hang on. Well, yeah, let's get calling. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's Grilling not going spree. To work. Take out client privilege. Ah. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, <laughs> place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. <laughs> okay. Better get to it. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. Kitchen? You'll need a key for that. Oh. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, baby. <laughs> this is becoming a thing, isn't it? Okay, so can I leave? Right, where to start? Yeah, where to start? I want to what check out the kitchen. Order from somewhere. If I were a partying frat boy. Hmm. We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or. Uh... Well, to be honest, <sighs> I just have to look around. There was something about the Chilupa Cabra place, wasn't there? Grilling spree. Hang on. I better see what's on this tape. A grilling spree ad. Okay. Right. I think that's where I found the, the note as well. But yeah, let's let's have a look at the tape first. And then, of course, I want to go check out this kitchen. So, let's see. Hey, hey, hey. Great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh, no. We're out of beer. What am I going to do? The party is going to be over. 
Fear not. A grilling spray will give you a free six pack of beer if Gala's High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Gala's High wins. A free six pack? Righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Gala's High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we murder them. <laughs> <laughs> me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grilling Spray or call on 555-749-8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for. <laughs> A free six pack? Huh. Yeah. How well Gallows High performed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Go uh, on. I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Spare ribs. Christ. Christ. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll put that there. Uh, r that newspaper that I found in the offices last time mentioned someone winning. Was it? Was it the? Uh, was it the high school? Where was it? Here. Go Gala's High, I guess. Right. Okay. That might be it, then. That might be it. Nothing delivered through the door? No? Okay, good, good. Okay. Let's see, then. Alright. Got some sort of cleaning supplies here. It's a broom closet, essentially. Here we have... I guess this is the kitchen. Here we are. All right. Let's see. Anything in the fridge? Not a great deal, really. No. I think I'm going to go hungry tonight. Uh, okay. Rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Oh. Interesting offer. That's a very... What, one free beer for every point that they win. Okay, well that... That beats the previous one. Easily. Does that mean... <laughs> Alright, we, we might be talking to Ponty again. I don't know. Anything else? Nothing in that bin. <laughs> Look at this place. It looks cool. Midnight Axe. Oh, it's out of order. Damn. Alright. Hmm. So, yeah. 28, 20. That's it. 28 free beers? Are you serious? That is one hell of a deal. It's got to be, right? Providing that the frat know about that, it's got to be. Right, okay, it's just playing the radio again. Um. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think we might be calling Ponty again, honestly. Here we are, the exit. Can we? Bye. For now. Brilliant. Okay, some more stairs. Hmm. Alright, private. So many locked doors, so few keys. Wow, okay, there's a couple more around here. A couple of spillages too. Do not disturb. Uh, I guess they're right. In here? Locked tight. Damn, okay. Right. We're gonna need to find a few more keys, aren't we? It's a bit worrying that we can't leave. Yeah. None of the uh, the push bar doors seem to be working. Okay. Here we are then. Hey, find anything useful? Maybe. Yeah. I'll <laughs> I I think I'm ready. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Yeah. Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. Right. Okay, Forrest. What'll it be? Out of the choices, uh, I mean, they're all fantastic options, but Ponty's Pizza, that's, that's insane. 28 beers, wow. Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. All right. Is it going to be Brian? Ponty's Pizza. Yep. May I take your order? Uh, <laughs> right. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. What's going on? Uh, may I take your order? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
garlic bread. Sure. I need some garlic bread. I need the bread. Can't. Where do you want that delivered? That's a great question. Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it. And we'll add really? that over to you right away. So it was oh, them. And, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. Yeah? The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. <laughs> yeah, please don't. And now we wait. So I got it we right. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Right. Uh, tell you what, should we actually... Wait, what was this one? The word, smooth. I don't think we put this one on yet, have we? Let's try that. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Right. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? <laughs> oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Hmm, okay. Why do I feel like he's fishing for ideas for a date? There's a, a little bit of a rapport between them, it feels like. Uh, yeah, e e equally good? You mean equally good? Yeah, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Fair right. enough. So, between grilling spree and chalupa coppers. Mm. I mean, it depends. Yeah? Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? Let's send you change, straight to the depending toilet. Depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe I... Hold that thought, for us. We've got a call coming in. Oh. Yep, so we do. Right. Here we go, then. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hey, this is Fred Poker! <laughs> we got some calling, Brad, and a note to call this number. <laughs> yes! Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And. Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. Not Goose. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? No. Oh, this is such a Goose prank. It's not a prank. It's definitely not a prank. This is, uh, this is an emergency. Plunker, this is an emergency. I... Nice try, Goose. I may be drunk, but I'm no... Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I... <laughs> How can I prove this to you? <laughs> oh, let me get a second opinion on this. All right. Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control the tune. Right. So, play us The Flow. Oh, The Flow. Wait, I know wait, that one. What? The Flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Here we go. Right, volume up. Here it is. Oh shit! Okay, okay, Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Okay. Forrest, line two. Oh, first time using line two. Here we go. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest. Ah. It's the killer. He's at the door. Grace. Am I too late? Oh my god. It's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Clive? Oh, the party has arrived. Oh, thank god. He's gone and... Oh. oh, is that you, Radio Man? <laughs> Don't worry. We brought the beer. Good times, are you? <laughs> thank you, Forrest. No worries. You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Yeah. Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. <laughs> Very true. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? About Clive? What is that all about? Yeah. 
Clive, I didn't talk. Ooh. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but really, your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. Yeah. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. We do another one. Oh boy. <sighs> right. Okay. So far, so good. I think I've made for the most part all the right choices. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the scream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. Okay. The killer roaming the streets of our fair town. Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. Yeah? It's a safe, family-friendly place. Where is it? Uh, yeah, what, what small business do you own? Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! For fuck's Come sake. Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two-for-one... God damn it, Party, <laughs> no! No free ads! <laughs> Jeez, he's relentless. I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Pontes did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Really? Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. This isn't going to be another ad? Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16... The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. Okay. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Oh. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. Oh. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly, <laughs> we planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. Ah, oh, I to see. Take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. I'm gonna need that maze from downstairs. That's what I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? <laughs> if you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yeah. Yes, that's why I'm calling. Okay, not the sharpest knife. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, don't stay and wait. Go home to your parents. Get somewhere safe. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. Oof. But, uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. <laughs> Hang on. Some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! I don't think that's Molly. It'll take a little while to get here, but uh thanks again, Forrest. Right. It's been good talking. It's not Molly. Oh, Unless of course Molly whistles. Molly can't whistle. It's not Molly. <laughs> no, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst. Oh god. Uh, we, we will get you out of this, and I think I know how. Stay calm, Eugene. We'll get you out of this. Calm? I'm about to die a virgin! <laughs> Listen, Eugene. Breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Right. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate... Here's a track for all you lovers out there. Right. Let's try the late night lurkers, shall we? Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers, if you dare. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Right, right. Shame she isn't here. Oh, 
was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Uh, maybe we should call Barbara. Maybe we should call Barbara then, if she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. Ah. Uh. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. Right. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, hopefully it will be. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh. Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. <laughs> She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Yeah. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ah, uh, yeah. Did ring any bells? That post-it right. note. Yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. All right. Peggy getting bossy there. Okay. Uh, so I, I found that in the bin, didn't I? And I think I just put it on the countertop, so it should be easy enough to find. So, yeah. There it is. There it is. Bingo. Here's That's what it. I was looking for. Okay. No one at the door. No. Nothing posted through. Good. Good. Right. Okay. It's quite a complicated maze, honestly. Did he say it was in the center? So he's by that tree. Okay. And we need to get him to the top. And there's various little things on the way. Okay. Yep, okay, let's put this down. Uh, let's talk to Peggy. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? Uh, never mind, it doesn't matter right now. Mm. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. He's still alive? Good. Okay, Forrest, right. shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. <sighs> I'm lost, Forrest. Wow, he's close. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. One. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Okay. Right, hang on. Okay, this is, okay. thankfully it isn't timed. Uh, so he's looking at one, and two is to the right. So he's facing east right now. Okay. We're gonna need to figure this out. Exactly how the hell do we get out of here from there? I think he probably wants to turn left. That's an option, isn't it? Yeah, go left. I think if he turns right and goes to this south side, the south side is kind of cut off from everything. That's not gonna... That's not gonna help him. It's gonna be left. Go, go left. Go left. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I went left, then tried a right. Okay. I have a pig statue in front of me. That's number three. A rocking horse on my left. That's four. Okay, okay. So there's a pig statue in front. So he's looking at the pig statue. So he's facing east. He, um... He doesn't want to go past the horse statue. He wants to kind of head towards five, but not really. He wants to head west. If he's facing east, he wants to... Yeah, uh, go backwards? Go backwards. Oh, God! Why didn't I just fight her over? <laughs> <laughs> Has he got a chainsaw? I'm at a crossroads. Oh, God. Okay. Which way? It, uh, I think I know which one you're at. The one just south of five. It's gonna be left again, I think. Go left. Oh. There's a tiny barn in front of me. Tiny barn. And a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. Okay. Okay, the Scarecrow's six. There's a mini barn that's eight. So he said there's nothing to the sides? There's nothing to the sides. So he can't see seven? He can't see the farmer hat? Or maybe he just overlooked it. Oh god, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, if, if, he, if he didn't see the farmer hat, he's probably on the crossroads that's a little bit south of that. So, tiny barn ahead of him. So, he's looking at eight. He's actually facing south. 
In which case, he probably wants to go right, I think. His left is just going to be a dead end. Go right. Go right. Okay. I can't run. Much more. He wants to go through nine, the, the silo area. I just passed a cordon silo. Good, good, good. Didn't see anything else. Okay. Ooh. Please. Where do I go? Okay. He's just passed the corn silo. He didn't see anything else in the way. So he didn't see ten. He didn't see the beehives. So he didn't go that way. He must have gone up that sort of right path. Okay, so if he's approaching it, if he was approaching from like east to west past the corn silo, then he's maybe now facing south again, and then, and then uh, right, go right, go right. That should take him up to the top left corner and around to the entrance. He's out? <laughs> and my bike's still here! <laughs> oh, thank you, Forrest! You're welcome. I love you, Molly! <laughs> <laughs> All right! That was tense. Yeah. I think I held my breath the whole time. Same. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Uh, probably not. Okay, 149. So far, so good. Thus far, we've saved everyone. I hope that trend continues in part three. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Like or dislike the video, and I'll see you in the next part. You know how to play an ad, right? Do you want to know how to play a cassette? Yes. Sure. Sure, yeah, we'll figure it out. He's roller disco lessons. Praying. <laughs> we got baby crawling, <laughs> balloon popping balloons for sale. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. <laughs> Here's the situation. It's a part of the show now. Whistling man. I turn it up, he comes in, and I get my head chopped off. Think right. of something else. Okay, yep. I'm so glad some of these decisions aren't timed. Do you want to go check it out? No. Mm -hmm. Jeannie and Carrie's friendship What the fuck? Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. <laughs> we'll remove her from the cell. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Okay. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. You've had two seconds. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, indeed. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Go on. I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Christ. Christ. There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but- Really? I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! For fuck's Come sake. On. It's not Molly. Oh, Unless, of course, Molly whistles. Molly can't whistle. It's not Molly. <laughs> Which one is Barbara again? Barbara! You know, Barbara! Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. God, help me out, Peggy. <laughs> She's... I just want it so much. Oh. I'm out! He's out? <sighs> and my bike's still here! <laughs> oh, thank you, Forrest! You're welcome. <laughs>